Here's a summary of an argument for God. I would love for you to answer uh, for our audience, what is the watchmaker argument? Well, this is an argument for God's existence that goes all the way back to the late 1700s. And the idea here is that a watch requires a watchmaker. And when you look at biological systems, they look like machines and therefore they too require a watchmaker. And one of the things that I think is fascinating as a biochemist is that inside the cell are these molecules that literally look like machines. Their molecular motors or the machinery that manipulates DNA literally is functioning like a computer system. And so we know that motors and computers come from minds. So if we see these machines and computers inside the cell, that indicates that the cell must come from a mind as well. Now, on its face, this can seem very intuitive. In fact, I'd wager that this sort of reasoning undergirds the confidence that many people have in their belief in God. But should it? I'd say not so fast. Let's briefly go over some of the questions we might ask when interrogating this line of reasoning. Number one, does this analogy actually work? It's not at all clear that it does. As Graham Oppie writes, the compelling reasons that we have for supposing that the watch is the product of intelligent design simply do not carry over to reasons for supposing that the natural world is the product of intelligent design. The background knowledge that we have about the production of manufactured materials and components is not paralleled by any comparable knowledge about the production of biological materials and components. More could be said, of course, but there's a genuine question as to whether this analogy can do as much work as some people think. Number two, does the data support these intuitions? Suppose we grant that there's something valuable to this analogy, or even that the reasoning seems to work. It's now time to test our armchair theorizing against the data of the real world. And what do we find when we do? I think it can be convincingly argued that there is a powerful defeater lurking in evolutionary theory, most notably in its success at accounting for the appearance of design in biological organisms. So no, the data doesn't seem to support the intuitions foundational to the argument. And much more work is ahead for the proponent who wishes to establish that it does. For clarity, when I say the appearance of design, I mean the appearance of being designed by a personal agent. Three, does appealing to God actually solve the problem? Think of it this way. If the complexity of the biological order cries out for an explanation beyond itself, then how much more would the complexity of the mind that thought it up? Or so one objection goes. If the theist concedes that God's mind is complex, and also that complexity is the kind of thing that cries out for an explanation beyond itself, well, then we've set ourselves spiraling down a rabbit hole. It's just this Yahweh. He was an atheist. Was. Surprise, sporty. I'm real. You're a vastly intelligent and complex being, Yahweh. Did you think nothing created you? <laughs> you think you just created yourself? There are two ways a theist could respond to this. They could say that complex things don't need an explanation if they exist necessarily, and God exists necessarily. Or they could deny that any complexity exists in God at all. Strictly speaking, both of these responses sidestep the original objection, but they just trade one problem for a host of new ones. It's beyond the scope of this video to do a deep dive on what those problems are, but I'll link a paper in the description for those interested. Number four, if successful, how much support would this reasoning lend to theism? Surprisingly little, actually. Let's strengthen this analogy by talking about cell phones instead of watches. When I look down at my phone, I do infer a design, yes, but I also infer a team of embodied designers who made the phone out of pre-existing stuff. Applying these inferences to biological organisms hardly lends support to the idea of a single unembodied designer who ultimately created Ex Nihilo. Instead, they straightforwardly undermine it. Further, when I recognize suboptimal features on my phone or some app, I infer fallibility at best and incompetence at worst. And if I were to click on a link that gave me a virus, I would infer malevolent design. Again, if we take this analogy seriously and carry over these insights into the realm of biological life, then I think you can see how subpar design and unimaginably cruel processes undermine theism. And that's just it. In order for this analogy to get off the ground as a support for theism, apologists have to latch on to one kind of inference we make about human artifacts while ignoring all the others. Speaking of apologists and the existence of God, I actually have a video exchange debate on the existence of God with an apologist that we'll be releasing in the coming months. But until then, click this video next to me for a quick summary of reasons to be skeptical of God's existence.